Hi guys, and welcome back to Brooklyn, where my husband, Sean, and I are taking our 1881 townhouse back to the studs to create a modern family home for us and our daughter, Grace. My name's Brad, and we've been living in our carriage house just out back while our house is under construction. Last time, the crew took down the entire back wall of our house, including the bathtub bump out that had hung precariously off the back of the house for 90 years. Then they rebuilt the entire back wall and added a three-foot cantilever to extend our daughter's bedroom over the courtyard below. In this episode, the walls start to close in as the interior framing begins to go up and we get our first look at the rooms we've been planning for the last 11 years on paper. And it's wonderful and weird at the same time. And our building engineer gave us some bad news that resulted in a ton of extra work for the crew and another week's delay to our schedule, but gives us a more fireproof house. If you like seeing what happens behind the scenes at a construction site, then please click on like and subscribe, okay? Let's go. Before we head back into the house today, I want to give you a quick reminder of what the house looked like before demolition. That's our garden up there. That's Sean out there. So this will be all one big room all the way to the back of the house. All the way to here. And that's into our courtyard. And that's the carriage house back there. That's a temporary shed. But this will all be one space, and the ceilings are about four feet higher than this. Actually, they're two and a half feet taller. The previous owner had dropped the 10 foot high ceilings down to make it easier to heat, which you can see out here by the stairway, which still has the actual ceiling height on this floor. A few weeks later, the crews came in and began to demolish the 1980s renovation that the last owners did, except for the original staircase, which we're keeping and refinishing. It took a few weeks for the crew to work their way through the house and we ended up with about 10 dumpsters of debris. A lot of people were very bothered by how many plastic bags our crew used and thought it was wasteful. Yes, we agree, that's a lot of plastic waste. But here in New York City, the laws state that we have to contain all the plaster dust that comes from a demolition and that means inside bags. All of the properties around here are so close together that we'd have a lot of angry neighbors if everything nearby was covered in a thick layer of plaster dust. Once the house was completely gutted and an empty slate, the crew began to level the floors. Since we have 10 and a half foot ceilings, we're leveling on top of the old pine floorboards instead of spending the money to remove them and gain that extra inch. Then they move to the outside walls and begin to shim them to make sure they're plumb. giving us a perfectly square frame to begin with. So now it's time for the interior walls to go up and this is what we've been waiting so long for. Today, they're gonna to be working here in our kitchen dining room back door area. That's gonna be a pantry, that's gonna be a toilet. And on the end of the day, when you show up here, it's a pantry, it's gonna be, you know, here's a little, little toilet, little, pan little uh, powder room right there. Mm -hmm. right. Here's gonna be some two closets. That's right, right. First, they installed a ceiling frame for the only walls that we're gonna have on this floor. But let me show you on the plans. This is the middle floor of the house and where our living room, kitchen, and dining areas will all be open to each other. But up here in the back corner, we've got two kitchen pantries and past them is our half bathroom. Then next to the bathroom is the coat closet next to our back door. It's this section that they're building today. First, they frame the wall between us and our next door neighbor's house. And by the end of the day, they framed it out and we get our first look at these hardworking spaces cleverly packed into this corner. And that leaves us the rest of the floor open for our kitchen, dining room, and lounge areas. The next week, our crew has moved upstairs and has begun powering through the three bedrooms. Here, they're framing out our daughter's bathroom against the far wall, then continuing into her bedroom. Take a look at the top edge of the framing and you can easily see the slope of our roof. Our ceilings will be level, of course, but lower here. In the front, where our bedroom is, the ceilings will be 10 and a half feet. Back here, they're about down to nine feet. 
The crew is really fast, and by the end of the week, our entire bedroom level is framed out. Finally, the weekend comes. With the workers gone and the house silent, Sean and I get our first chance to walk through our future bedrooms and see what we've done. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Lights on. Damn. Here in the ground floor rental, they've leveled the ceilings and floor and framed the wall where our foyer begins. The three of us have been crowded into our carriage house for 11 years, so we're all so ready to have more space. I set my camera down so that Sean and I can actually stand in the space and understand it in a whole new way. God, it's here, right? It's crazy that it's here. Our dreams have become realities. Here's a look at where we're standing on the top bedroom floor in the middle of the stairway hall with a camera pointing towards the front where our bedroom is. There's a window right there. Oh, oh it's there. Yeah. Wait, and then we have this big wall here for a piece of art. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty wide bedroom, <laughs> don't you think? It's pretty small, <laughs> <laughs> especially when, the, especially when the, the walls go in. Okay. But it's all we could afford. <laughs> he was so hoping for a king size bed, but we do not have that much room. Then impress here. We've been taking our laundry to our weekend house in Asbury Park for the last nine months, so we're thrilled that we're having a laundry and linen closet right here outside our bedrooms. All right. You're in. That's pretty much it, because the wash is right here. Yep. Right? And it's stacked, right? It should be basically, it's like one person can be in there doing right. stuff. Right, and that's it's got, the whole counter. You've got your whole station, and all right? Sink. Right. And then Cabinetry. we should have one of those things, if it's going to be that high, we should have one of those things that like Dawn used to you had hang? in Scotland. Yeah, and you just yes. dry in there. Yeah. Were those things that come down like this? Or was it? No, it's like a pulley. It's a rack that comes down. Yeah, how rack comes down. <laughs> right. Right, you hang your clothes, you can just hang stuff to... Right, if you don't want to put it in the dryer. If you want to hang things to right. hang dry. Yep. Oh, that's totally what we're doing. After Sean mentioned the ceiling rack that his friend Don had in Scotland, I went online and I quickly found exactly what he was describing on lots of different sites. But then hit on this one, PulleyMaid, the home of the iconic PulleyMaid clothes error, a British company on the banks of the River Severn in the heart of the picturesque market town of Shrewsbury, Famous for its historic buildings and a monument to the British Industrial Revolution, the world's first iron bridge completed in 1779. Where better to manufacture a classic Victorian cast iron laundry product that happens to be the perfect response to a growing concerns about climate change and global warming because it's helping reduce household carbon emissions on a national scale. So Sean and I ordered their Deluxe Error cast iron rack painted white with six sustainably sourced Scandinavian pine laths and cast iron pulley, and it just arrived in the post. So once we get some actual walls and a ceiling, we'll put it up and give it its first test run and show you it in action. We just have to go like that. Right. Are you suddenly thinking of like, getting a hamper? Wait, oh, one of those in the wall remember, closets? Yeah, the hamper we had in, in uh, on West 72nd Street that was in, in the right. wall, but you know, here I can just reach into our closet <laughs> and from, get from our hamper. Oh my gosh. We just put it in the laundry. If there's right a little spot here that it goes into, you shove yeah, it's so in. lazy you just couldn't go out the door and throw it in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. That's really lazy. Yeah, so where's that dumb waiter gonna come up here? <laughs> I think you need two by two. <laughs> Sean's convinced that we can no, Grace is convinced oh that we gosh. can have a dumb waiter. We totally could have one with the amount of space that we have up here, because the whole pulley system is above it. You could do it with a pulley. Uh-huh. All the way from the ceiling. Oh my gosh, we could make a right feature down. of it. We could be open. <laughs> it would go right down into the kitchen. <laughs> and there's a basket that <laughs> drops down. No, it's just a, it's just a shelf. It opens up. You open the door and there's a shelf. And you put whatever you want on the shelf. You put your 
here. Mm -hmm. Washing detergent, I'd, send I it up. I would love to have a dumb waiter. <laughs> I just can't imagine that's gonna happen. That's, that would be so fantastic. Wouldn't it be brilliant? It's much better to laugh along with his crazy ideas than to try and talk him out of it, because he's usually right. <laughs> On Saturday, as the city quiets down, our general contractor Martin stops by to talk us through the progress on the house so far it's and it's what's getting, next. It's getting great. It's actually smaller than right. it's good color grade, actually. Salt and pepper, right? Uh, right. Hi, how are you? I was just saying, this is, this is very cute. <laughs> Wait, it's been seven months since we began this renovation and uh, so much has been done. Marcin's gonna give us the uh, highlights of, of, of that. So okay. where are we? So here's where we are. So we got our demolition completed. The structural work is all completed. The extension is built. The floors are replaced. The plumbing is done. The electrical is done to 90%, I would say. And then we have our framing almost completed. So to show you the highlights, uh, this is the extension. This is where we are. Uh, we had to rebuild the entire rear facade of the house, starting off the second floor. Uh, this is all brand new. Our structural beams and layouts, this entire section of the floor had to be replaced to support the cantilever extension that we have on the third floor. So as you step on the outside of uh, the very edge of your extension, you will be putting the pressure down. So the pressure that you put down needs to withstand the pressure that goes up over here and so on and so on. So that is all finished according to structural drawings. The blocking is finished, the floor is up. And once all the structural parts are finished, we can actually move on to the interior partitions. We can uh, run our plumbing based on new layouts. We can run the electrical. And as far as the uh, layout of the house, this is all pre-designed and it's all on the plans. And we make little tweaks here and there uh, according to what clients want. Uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Tell me about the yellow back there because we had a whole lot of brick nogging. Yes. Right. So the brick nogging is supposed to work as our fireproofing. Uh, that unfortunately didn't work out for us too well. And the reason why is, this, I'm sure you remember, behind that yellow dense glass, we've had our neighbor's facade. Right. Right, which is all wood. So that being said, that loose nogging that was over here and it was missing in parts. It all has to go. Our engineers said we need to remove all of the brick and install a proper fire barrier between us and the house right next door. This set our schedule back because the metal framing and the plumbing had already been installed, so our crew had to carefully go in behind the plumbing and framing to remove all the loose brick that had been put there in 1881 as insulation and fireproofing. So over the next week, all the brick nogging on all three floors on the side next to our neighbor's house was removed. and it all slowly made its way to the mini dumpster out front where the bags were emptied and taken back inside to be reused. Once the brick is gone, the crew begins cutting the dense glass gypsum sheathing to fit in between the old wood studs where the brick was. Dense glass is the preferred substrate layer in construction because it's perfect for use under brick, stone, stucco, and metal siding. It's used in walls, roofs, ceilings, and floors. And besides being fire rated, it's both water and airtight. Give them the nails. Yeah. In order to secure the dense glass in place, the guys cut small strips of wood to use as backing. They nailed them into place at the back edge of our studs, right next to our neighbor's 1870 wood siding to create our new outside wall. Then piece by piece, they fill in the empty spaces with the dense glass and have to carefully fit it in behind the plumbing and the metal framing. By the end of the week, the walls on all three floors have new yellow fiberglass exterior sheathing, replacing the old original brick nogging that had deteriorated and wasn't up to fire code anymore. Replacing that nogging with the dense glass and fireproofing it better actually helps you to 
uh, extend the flame transfer from house to house if there is a fire next right. door and the fire is here. So it slows it down. Yeah, it slows it down a little bit, right? It's not going to stop it entirely, but it slows it down a little bit. So there is a code that tells you how much of fireproofing you're supposed to have, and that is being determined by the wall assembly. So right. a certain wall assembly will give you an hour of fire stopping. Uh, different wall assembly will give you two hours and three hours and so on and so on. So over here, by applying the dense glass, right, we're given it a certain protection that the code requires. And we're gonna have a spe special inspection done to, with this, and the inspector will look at it and tell us like, hey, you did a good job, this is enough, and we are all in compliance with the code. So that's the dense glass over here. Uh, we didn't have to do it on the other side because there is just an empty space on the other side. And right, it's a driveway, right? Yes, there's a drive around there, but also the nogging is full and it's in a great condition. It doesn't move, it's solid, it's there, and we don't have to remove it, right? Over here, this was a suggestion done by an engineer. We follow the suggestions, obviously, and we want to be compliant with every code that city throws at us. Uh, we don't want to have any surprises. So, yeah, that's the yellow stuff. So just tell me what you fit in here between the original building, the wall of the original building, the mm -hmm. interior wall, and where the wall into the room will be. That space. You've got wires, you've got pipes, you've got copper, you've got sewage it's a hard here. Wall, that one. It is. What is it is. So everything starts with the layout of the house. Once you figure out the layout of the house, you need to understand what does it entail to get that layout, what we have to do. Right. Right? So we start with the structural work, right? right. We complete all the structural work, all the mm -hmm. support beams, and then you just have bare guts of the building. And it's level at this point. It's the floors are leveled, the walls are not, because right. you still don't have your framing built, right? right? So what you're dealing with is you're dealing with the off angles of the front facade, you know, to the party wall. It, it, it may not be square, it may or may not be square, no. right? So then you figure it's like, okay, so this is my layout, and this is, is where we do our bathrooms, this is where we do our kitchen. So what do we need for the bathrooms? We need the pipes, right? And this is the example of the pipe that takes care of the bathroom. We need to put that pipe somewhere, right? So we take the biggest pipe that will go in and serve the house. And then based on the dimension of that pipe, we know exactly how much space we need to enclose that pipe. Right. So that tells us so the difference, the right. distance from the original wall of the house right. to the finished framing of the house. Right. So that, the, the, the diameter of this pipe will determine uh, how far that wall has to come yes. out, right? Because yeah. the okay. drywall will end up being here. Right, attached Exactly, to so really close to that pipe, right? So there is a pipe, there is a hanger over here, there's a coupling over here. You need to make sure everything fits perfectly in. And that is your finished wall. Mm -hmm. Because that's the deepest thing we have. That is the deepest thing we have, that's okay. correct. So everything else is a bonus, right, for us. You know, as we build, the pipe gets a little bit skinnier, and then you have a yeah. little bit more space. Yeah. You can fit all of the electrical, all of the cables. Everything can go in here into this cavity, right? So that's our working wall, right? Every bathroom is on the same side, right? So all of your main risers end up being on the same side. Then you take that wall, this entire length of the wall, you place it in, and then you need to figure out 90 degree angles from that wall to the front facade. Yeah. So if you walk into the first facade, to the, to the front facade, what you can see over here is, if you have the metal framing very, very, very close to your yeah. original house, that is not the case on the other side. Oh yes, I, yes, we noticed this, right. So right so now, we have a 90 degree angle between our main wall yeah. and the front facade wall, but to catch that angle, continue it to the very corner, we can't rely on the original facade of the house. We have to build our own frame. You can see it here, the angle of how the frame comes away from the original wall because the frame is level, but the wall isn't. Right. That's correct. This is an overview of what we're talking about. The new interior wall is at a right angle to the side walls, but our original front wall sticks out about four or five inches farther on the left than it does on the right. You can see up here, you've got about six, seven inches there, right? Between the, you can yeah. see with you. This is the distance you care for. The space in between the original frame of the house yeah. and the metal framing over here. Oh, okay, great. You can see it great here, right? Yeah. From here right. to here. So that's the distance we get here. As you get closer to the opposite corner, I can, it gets tighter yeah, and tighter. Yeah, it's tight, I can just get my fingers in here. Yep. So that distance tells you. Sit up here. So that distance tells you how much of square the front facade was to the party wall of the house. Why? And we'll Why well, wasn't it built straight? It was originally, probably. Uh, maybe there was one or two degrees of a difference. Right. But then over time, the house settles. You know, it's over 100 years old, so things will happen to it and will become a little bit cockeyed. But they didn't have laser levels, right? So how did they, they level did, it? They didn't. Uh, 
by math, you can figure out the angle. Just, just plumb lines. Plumb lines, you can figure a weighted out. Weighted line, yep. a weighted yep. string, or whatever. Yep. yep, you can just figure out the angle by that. It's pretty, really, really easy. And uh, that's why we had issues with pretty much every wall. When you see something that might be like three inches off, is that there. movement like or is careless, that careless? Isn't it? Like at the time, they didn't have to care as much. Uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, if You're not going to throw the 140 year old builder on the bus right now. No, 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 I, no. I don't want to do that. But it, you know, if you lose your angles, if you use little plumb lines, uh, it's going to show later. It's going to okay. show on your doors. It's going to show your trims. It's going to show on your flooring. Right. And if you look at the floors being done, you know, 130 years ago, it's still hardwood floor. It still had the straight lines. And you see those weird right. angles. So no, every builder's goal. Look how is level it is plumb. now. It's so, so amazing every, how every level it is. Every piece of metal in this room is now square and plumb and. That's correct. In line, right? That's the correct. Floor, it's, it's a completely perfect laser. It's laser level floor. If laser you don't level. give it enough attention, if you don't do too good of a job, you're gonna pay for it later. Uh, you're gonna pay You'll for it when you install right. your doors. <laughs> exactly. Well, dancing is another thing. But if you every time you install your doors, you install uh, your floors, mm -hmm. you're gonna have those perpendicular lines. You're gonna have those, you know, uh, lines that should one should align with another. And if you ruin your framing, if you don't give it enough attention, mm -hmm. if you don't catch all the angles, then it's Indeed. all gonna show, right. and it's just gonna look ugly, right? So imagine when you install your hardwood flooring, there's gonna be a plank that's gonna run along this line on the house. Yep. If my wall is not perfectly parallel with the facing wall on the other side, then the plank and I lost it, then it will show on a plank. Because right. yeah. you will see that line, if the plank is three and a half inches wide, yeah. right? it's three and a half inches on this side, it's only an inch on that side. Mm -hmm. And if that is not parallel with that, mm -hmm. then you'll see that line just disappearing, becoming thinner and thinner, and that is not a good job. No, that's not a good job. So this requires a tons of attention just to make sure like all of the doors are going to So we're fit. putting in a perfectly laser leveled space box inside of our 1881 townhouse. That's correct. That's the idea. This just got delivered. What's this yes. for? So this is for our bulkhead and this is for our carpet wall for so you guys can have your roof access. Let's go and see. Yeah. So it's amazing to think that this space is the same size as the space that we were just in, that big open living area, because we've got all of the, all of the walls laid out, framed up. We've got the, a small bedroom here. Grandma's bedroom is in here, window, closet. Grace's bedroom is here, big window, big closet. And this is the new space that was just pushed down the old one. Oh, so this is the this is the old bump out. This is where the murder tub was. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is Grace's bathroom through here. <clears throat> there will be a tub and shower here, toilet there, vanity there. Oh look, our newest sexy electric panel. So there's a little open foyer here. This is a linen press. This is this door here goes to the laundry, which is just a small room in there. And this is the door to the main bedroom. Bathroom through here. Ten and a half foot ceilings. Right, closet over there. He had it coming. He had it coming. He only had himself to blame. And this is our bathroom. We've got the vanity with two sinks here. Mirror. Toilet is here, and then a shower. No tub here. Shower with uh, two two shower heads. That's it, pretty much. Glass wall, glass door. Maybe. Maybe. This is the most exciting that has ha happened recently because this is essentially the stairway to the stars. This is the stairway to the bulkhead, the stairway to heaven, to our garden. So the new set of stairs will come up from here. And you'd start walking up the new set of stairs here. There's a landing about, I think it's about five, five feet-ish, five and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Landing goes across there and then another set of stairs takes you right up and the bulkhead. And it gets you out to the roof, correct. Through the door. Yes, sir. And onto the roof. But you've had to do some leveling up there too, right? Yes, so, uh, Look at this. 
you can see the little thing over here, right? So th this is how we built up the framing to make sure that we have a level line for our bulkhead, right? Yeah. Because you have a sloped roof over here and you know, the highest portion of the roof is at the front facade, the lowest is at the rear facade. So as per structural drawing, what we needed to do is, uh, over here is we needed to open up the roof. And that big beam over here is a structural header that is supporting the rest of the beams of the original roof, which are running perfectly so to it. The dark beams are the old beams, the light beams are all the new stuff. This yes. is temporary, but that's all new. This is our platform. That's new. Yeah. And that's new. So this is our platform over here. Is So the idea is to measure out how large the opening in a roof is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Then create a support on either side of that opening. Right. That beam takes the load off of these guys. Great, great. And that allows us to create an opening and get the staircase up and get you guys out on the roof. Right. So we've got the big hole in the wall. You've framed the bulkhead. How, what happens next? So first what we need to do is we need to build something called parapet walls. Parapet walls, right. So parapet walls, they're gonna go around the entire roof. Mm -hmm. Exactly, around the entire house. Or just the three sides, right? Yeah. To protect you from falling over and crashing down on the ground, right? right. So there is a code to that. It needs to be at least 42 inches tall. Okay. We're gonna start building the parapet wall and securing the roof. And the next step would be to actually build up the decking on the roof. What we're gonna use to build your deck is it's gonna sit on pedestals. If, it, if we're gonna build a subframe, if it's gonna be epa, if it's gonna be teak, if it's gonna be tiles, all sorts of things. But the idea is everything that's under the deck and below the deck needs to be completely waterproof. Yeah. So the roof would take about a week to do, right? All right. Uh, and then you have a closed envelope and then we move on to finishes. As our home finally begins to take the shape we've planned, we're just about halfway finished. Thanks so much for stopping by to see how things are going. We'll see you next time.